What's up, guys? Welcome back to Gate 7 International Sunday edition. I'm your host, Adi. I'm here also with Marcial on this crazy, crazy Sunday following what's been a really crazy and chaotic series of events in the transfer window. We're going to get into all of this. There's a lot of stuff to discuss, a lot of drama that's been going on, not just on the transfer front, but on the home front as well. So we're going to talk about all of it. Marcial, how are you doing today, buddy? Well, I'm a little bit tired, I would say, because those past few days have been very intense when it comes to Olympiacos news, mm -hmm. and we are getting closer to that game, re that gank uh, second game. So, yeah. yep, end of the weekend and beginning of the new week that will be full of of news. I'm expecting yeah. more positive news than negative ones, but who knows? We hope. <laughs> we hope. <laughs> We hope, we hope. Yeah, it's been it's been crazy, absolutely crazy. There's a lot to talk about, a lot of things for us to think about. But obviously, before we go into any of that, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's already dozens of you that are in here listening. Take a quick second, hit that like button, subscribe if you don't already. Help us grow the red and white community. There's a lot going on here. Patreon has been live. We're about a week in now uh, to Patreon. We've Got quite a few of you jumping on already, supporting us. There's a lot of good stuff that you can get on Patreon. Really quickly, we want to thank our newest Patreon supporters, uh, Johan, Johannes Schleich, Tas Zafiropoulos, George Yorgopoulos, George Echo, and George Nicholas. We have an army of Georges in Patreon now. So don't forget, guys, for a dollar a month, you get in the WhatsApp group. You get early access to uh, the data and information that we receive, uh, not just the data that we do for analysis, but uh, insider information we receive from a lot of sources. We share that in the Patreon group before we publish it live. The $5 a month tier gets you at least two extra episodes a month, including interviews outside of the world of Olympiacos, as well as early access to the scouting reports. You guys that are in there, you've already seen the early Heze scouting report, which won't go live until he is announced, if he's announced. And then, of course, there's the merchandise tier. So check all of that out if you want to support us. This is a way to help us continue to grow the community and do bigger and better things to give you the best Olympiacos content that we can. Uh, additionally, guys, don't forget wildfire relief. We posted the links. We shared on socials. A HEPA is doing wildfire le relief for Greece everywhere that's affected. We have a HEPA chapters in Greece that are delivering the relief and that are providing resources for that relief as well to firefighters, bringing in more supplies, everything to do that. So check that out and help us continue to support our firefighters and our medical personnel and our emergency personnel that are continuing to help everybody get back on their feet. So without further ado, let's get started. And the first thing we have to discuss, Martial, is the in Bum Huang, what is turning out to be a horror ending with what was such a great start for him at this club, beloved by the fans. And now, I mean, it's, it, it's becoming one of the worst possible scenarios. No, but none of us could have imagined this. And... Yeah. It's just to give you guys a brief, there's, there's been a lot, there's been a lot of information. So we're going to take all the information that's been going on and, and try to give it to you, cutting out the nonsense and just giving to you basically what the long and the short of it is. It started with a, before, before the first leg, according to Greek media and Greek insiders, Inbom Huang showed up at training. And just said goodbye to everybody and, and the coach and said he was leaving and then leaves. Then he shows up at the offices with a Turkish lawyer and starts disputing certain parts of his contract. And there's different things that we've heard about what the dispute is about. There's been reports that he... His camp, will say, believes that his contract was not a closed three-year contract. It was actually a one-plus-two-year contract, so therefore he is a free agent. But then at the same time, there were reports that he brought an offer, a €3 million Euro offer, and he wanted the club to release him so that he could go to whichever club is interested in him. It is, me it is a messy situation. It is very messy. Um, we know there's not a lot that we do know. Uh, a lot has been kept a little bit hush-hush about this. 
What we do know, uh, and this is from individuals we've spoken to that have not just followed in Bam Huang, but who, who know about uh, some of the teams that were interested in him in the past, uh, there's only been one Turkish club that has publicly expressed interest in in Bam Huang, and it is not Galatasaray, as we've seen in some media reports. It actually has been Fenerbahce. We don't know, of course, if it is Fenerbahce that's interested in him. We don't know what the actual scenario here is but there's just seems to be a dispute in a gray area surrounding the laws of player contracts where he may or may not have been activated in a one plus two year deal that made it a three-year deal there's a lot that we still don't know yet but this appears to be the case of the dispute with the player so yeah as as things come out, we'll find out what the real story is. But this is what's being reported on. This is what's kind of flying around and what we've heard, the information, some of the information that we've received. There's been no word. We've heard nothing from the, the camp publicly of Imbam Huang. So we don't know his side of the story yet. But um, it's, uh, it, it's, it's a very interesting scenario. It's unfortunate because it's he, he was – Easily our best player last season. In my opinion, the best player that was in Greece, despite the fact that Pineda was the MVP. And it's just a it's just an, an awful situation. Marcial, what what's your take on this whole thing? Well, the I'm worried that we will lose him on a free because that gray zone you're speaking about uh, probably I've been studied by a lawyer, or if not two lawyers, or maybe a full crew of lawyers. So if Huang decided to go that way, he knew that he had a real chances to be freed. Mm -hmm. And it, it reminds me a little bit of Podense's situation when he came to Olympiakos. Uh, but it's weirder because Podense like, he was attacked by uh, sporting fans, if I'm yes. not correct, if I'm not wrong. Meanwhile, uh, Huang used that another gray zone that was the Russian war you know, to get out of his contract. And my theory is that he probably was approached by someone that said to him, okay, you can be free because the, those Russian contracts weren't real contracts. It was contract suspension, not termination. Right. right. And with the transfer fee you can, you can get as a free player and the bonuses the agent can get when you sign a free player. It's a win-win situation. The only loser in that is Olympiakos. Right. And I, I don't know because I assume he brought offers to the club earlier because we know that he was targeted by Napoli, uh, German clubs. But those clubs, they don't do business like that. Like, I no, don't imagine Napoli doing that. I do not imagine a German club pushing to get a player on the free <clears throat> that was in Russia. So, either it's Turkish team or maybe Saudi Arabian, but it's it's messy, and I'm I'm a, I'm not very optimistic on that one. Yeah, I I am inclined to believe it's a Turkish team simply because of how the Turkish clubs have done business like this with our players in the past, getting in their ear, trying to get them to force moves out so they don't have to pay a fee or as big of a fee. They did it with Guillerme. They did it now with uh, recently with Bakambu. So it's uh, I'm I'm inclined to believe that it it is a Turkish club doing this, but we'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what comes out of it. There's like I said, a lot is being kept, and um, yeah, I, I don't I, I, think I don't think it's going to be something that's going to be resolved right away. And unfortunately, the only thing I see that's happening is is a departure from the club at this point. Yeah, and also uh, the the fact that he wants to be free is not. I don't, I don't know how to say that, but probably a lot of th things happened before. Like, you, I, I assume he wanted to leave. Like, he did not say it publicly. He went to the preseason. But you, you know that every player is like that when you are right. in Olympiakos. If you get an offer from a, a better league, you will try your luck there. Yep. And I wonder, I'm suspecting the club not to have accepted an offer before. And mm -hmm. it kind of pissed off. Huang because he knew he was going to be uh, kept at Olympiakos unless someone 
will spend 20 million and it's not happening. Like no one will spend 20 million for Wong. Yeah. If we're objective and rational, you don't get that money from Wong. Exactly. He's, a, he's a very good player. I'm not debating that, but when, yeah. uh, when you take a look at the market currently, yeah. Freiburg, Freiburg was probably the best option for him. Yep. Well, we'll see okay. what happens. There's a lot, there's a lot going on. Um, Ira Kaur, thank you so much uh, for the donation, buddy. Um, if you want to get something for your donation in the future, Ira, check out check out our Patreon. The link is in our description. Uh, it's www.patreon.com slash gate seven international. You can get something for your donation. But thank you so much. Uh, his question is, do we have any inside info on Mike James coming to Libyakos? Actually, I'm pretty sure right before we went live, um, I saw the, it doesn't look like Monaco is willing to release his contract. I know uh, th this, this, I'm not a big basketball guy. I'm not as much. I just started watching it, you know, Philippiacos the last season and a half. Costa and, and Lambro are a little bit more in tune to this. But the last I had heard or the last that I read or that they had talked about was that uh, we were trying to get, there's a lot of ambiguity in what the club had said about whether or not they were targeting him. Obviously, the club said they don't deal with anybody that is, um, in, under contract, no players under contract with the, with any club. And the story has been that we've been trying to get Monaco to break the contract so that he can come to, to Libyacos. But it doesn't look like Monaco is willing to break his contract. And their social media team keeps saying that they're, they want to post contract extended this and that. So um, I don't, I don't know. It's tough. I mean, it right now, the, the transfers, window has been very difficult for the basketball team. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with that as well. But unfortunately there's no clarity with the Mike James situation, no inside info. They are trying to get Monaco to break the contract with them. And Mike James has also been very quiet about this whole thing too. Uh, oddly quiet, but yeah. eh. anyway, it's just, it's just one of those things. There's also, there's a lot of questions in here. Uh, I see a couple of you guys talking about uh, Jeze and Ortega. So, Marcial, let's get into this this Argentinian transfer chaos. The, doing business with South American clubs. We talked about it off camera. We've talked about it in the group chat. It is such a difficult situation with some of these clubs. And starting with the Ortega deal, uh, Greek media had said that there was an that um, it was 3 million euro offered for 85 to 90 percent of the player rights. Then the Argentinian media came back and said they rejected a 4 million euro offer for 80 percent of the players' rights. And then Sanakis comes out and says on uh, Sport FM that, or he tweeted it from Sport FM, that uh, in agreements in place, it's about three and a half million for 80 to 90 percent of the players' rights. He's arriving on Monday. Um, and there was like a similar situation with Heze. Heze, we heard, uh, he's coming. Then in media in Argentina saying he's not coming. Uh, the media in Argentina said that for him, we had offered four and a half million euro with a sell on. And then the deal was being held up. And Benfica, Warder Bremen were interested. Then Fender Bache was getting involved. Uh, now we hear he's on the way as well, but the people that we have talked to uh, journalists and people that are close to the matter in Argentina have told us there's a lot of people that are interfering with this deal. There is a lot, both club and non-club related individuals are involved in this, which is the case apparently with all of these deals, whether in South America, whether it's in Brazil or Argentina, this seems to be the, the modus operandi if you will, the deals there are messy. And the reason, um, I mean, these clubs want like permanent player rights to do business. Yeah. It's a mess. Marcial, what's your take on the, on the, the transfer chaos? It looks like both are coming. Both of these players are supposed to be coming and signing, but it's a mess. I will, be happy. I will be happy. Uh, when I, I will see the picture with, uh, of them with the Olympiacos jersey. But yeah, you, you said it because the Argentinian market is difficult. It's more easy for a Portuguese club because they used to, uh, you know, not owning the full uh, rights of the player. 
And that's why a lot of players from South America goes to Portugal, because, you know, the third property is also used in Portugal, and I'm not sure it's possible in Greece. Right. And, you know, Portuguese clubs, they do a lot of deals like uh, Garcia, uh, yeah. like high deal with Garcia. But, you know, in Greece, you can't really handle that. And we see that with Garcia, because if the percentage is too high, you will get scared about not receiving the, the whole fee. But a part of that, I'm really happy to see the club going back to South America. I know it hasn't been, it hasn't been successful every time, because we remember uh, Lovera, uh, Soldano, that kind of player that came straight from Argentina. But it's uh, probably the hottest market in the world, because you, you can get maxi... Maxi hype, I don't know to say that, but an Argentinian player that yeah. scored 10 goals with Olympiacos, uh, his value will skyrocket very quickly. Like imagine Madi, if he was Argentinian, he would play in the Premier League yet already. Right. Because he got he would have got that hype. And but Heze to me would probably look the the best signing on paper we've made recently. Oh, absolutely. Uh, I, look, I'm with you there. I, I like, yeah. I love the look of Heze. And guys, remember, if you're patrons on Patreon, if you're in the expanded content tier, the Heze deep dive is already available. I did the scouting report a couple of days ago. Um, so you are you get early access to that. Otherwise, for those of you that are not patrons, you do, once he's announced, if he's announced, I, I'm still going to say if, even though we're pretty sure about it, it will be live on YouTube and you can see uh, the scouting report on him. But yeah, you're right. I mean, Jose is really the, the real gem. But at least Ortega, it sounds like he wants out. He wants to come. Yeah, they have trouble so have in the him. club. Yeah. I've read that, like, they have trouble with the fans. A lot of yeah. players are pushing to leave. And the good thing is that when you those players from Argentina, they know that Olympiacos can be a step uh, for, uh, toward a better league in Europe. Like, they don't see it as a downgrade compared right. to someone inside the European market. So, right. like, I don't know to say that, but it's it looks like real transfers, like yeah. real targets, real players. Uh, they're not ready players. Maybe they're not the, the biggest name you can find, but when, when, we, when you see from where we come back as a club, like, I'm more than happy to have Heze at the club. Same for Ortega. And I didn't watch them play once. I don't know how they can do, what they can do, but you know that right. it's com compared to Vinagre, compared to uh, Ramon, compared to, I don't know, the, the amount of left back that we've signed recently, apart from Oleg, you know that Hortega right. won't have any trouble to settle in Greece, in the Greek league. I don't know what it will be about in Europe, but in the Greek league, I have no doubt. No. Oh. <clears throat> that, that there's a point there a hundred percent i i will say this um the the concern i do have regarding both of these players is that i i always get a little bit concerned when we bring in south american players with zero european experience because those are the ones that tend to have some difficulty assimilating in some way shape or form not just to to play but to the way of life it's it's different and this is stuff that we've heard from in in interviews we've done with <clears throat> with Zelia he brought this up and it's stuff we've heard about from other other players that have come from South America to play in Europe so that's that's one area where i show some concern but i also at the same time i do have trust in cordon and i'm trusting the process because look at all the complaints for the first the first couple signings right the first three signings we'll say Ibora, oh my God, look at this old guy we brought in. He sucks. It's another Pukalakis. And then uh, Kini, you know, we're bringing all of these old Spanish players. And look, have you heard the complaints since either one started playing? Ibora and Kini look great. Freire, I know there was some um, concern over some set pieces, uh, but everybody looked bad on set pieces to me um, against Gank. And I thought overall he was pretty good. I thought he was he's he was decent, and that partnership with Retos I think is going to be as they play together. If if Retos stays healthy, it looks pretty good to me. So I'm trusting because the early signings that people complained about, 
they look pretty good so far. So I, I'm trusting what Gordon sees. And the, they both seem to have the mentality, at very least, from early looks, from the scouting report on Heze. I, I would tell you the same thing. All of these players coming in, that's what they share in common. And if you guys listen to the, to the question Costa had asked Diego Martinez about Masuras and how Diego Martinez used Masuras as a forward, he brought up in his answer Alexadropoulos. How Masuras and Alexadropoulos just, they're guys that he can rely on to do whatever. And they, right. and they run. These are the mentality of players coming into the club. These are the mentality of players that he wants. So, and, and we've seen already in the early signings that have come in. So I'm, if, if, this is, if he believes this is going to work for him, he's done his research and he knows. And so far, it's worked out. Now, is he going to hit on everybody? Probably, probably not. Nobody's that good. But he's done a good job so far, and, and I'm trusting the process, and I'm trusting that these guys are worth the trouble that we are having. Uh, yeah, to you're in. totally right, because let's not forget that the first real game we've played, we won uh, an European game for the first time since months, if not, mm -hmm. yeah, months maybe. And when you see the, the fact that we have a coach, we have a team, like those two things, it's the most important things in football. Like it's, it seems simple to say that, but yeah, after what we lived last season, I'm not even, I'm, I'm, I will be stressed against Genk, but not as stressed as I was last summer when we played Limassol, for example. Right. Because I knew that going to Europa was the, the salvation of the club. I, I wouldn't say that, but with Corberan, I, had, I hadn't that trust on him, not in the club itself, but with Cordon and, and Martinez, like, you know that this team will produce something. Maybe it, would be enough, it won't be enough to go to Europe. Maybe it won't be enough to, go to win the, the league, but at, at least you will have something. Yeah, absolutely. And and you're already seeing it, Martial. The game, yeah. by all means, against Genk was not like a great game. There's a lot of stop start, you know what I mean? But you could already tell based on how the same players, most of the same players we had last season, by the way, were playing, how they were moving the ball. It was a different, completely different thing. Moving the ball quicker. They were they were giving their bodies. They wanted to be there. They were pressing together, working off of each other together, getting in the faces of the refs and the other players together. That's what I love to see. Like Ibora getting in, protecting his players, getting in the, we never had that fight. That didn't exist last season. So no, right. that mentality totally right. is a hundred percent needed. That atmosphere. Yeah, so it's, it's a good point noticeable. because when you see someone like BL coming in, for example, in my opinion, you can see, it does not really belong in that mentality. I'm not saying it should be pushed away, but you're speaking about the mentality. And when he came in every time, I find him like kind of soft. And I wonder if he will find his place in his team because the way we're moving on the transfer market the, uh, with Scarpa too, I don't know in which position it will fit. Well, you already, you already brought it up. Um... And uh, before we get there, there's a quick question I wanted to address from George Gordos. Hey, guys, Chef Gordon is cooking. You guys think we have this year's Super League on lock with what we're bringing in? I can Panathinaikos look pretty fierce to me. George, hold that question and ask us at the end of the window. And then we can give you probably a pretty good idea of what we think. Jonas Madsen, greetings, guys, from the motherland and Kalimno. Jonas, that's my island, buddy. Where are you at? Are you where are you staying? Are you staying in Masuri? Are you in Banormo somewhere? Are you staying at Bothia? Let me know. That's my island. So uh, very exciting. I don't think we've ever had somebody check in from Galimno before. Or maybe it was one time, like last year. Anyway. But Marcial, you brought him up. Let's talk about it. Scarpa is in is in Piria after all. He's it. He's gonna be wearing the red and white of Olympiacos. In the end, we told you last year he was coming. It just was delayed a year, and he's here. Uh, crazy scenario, but it has fueled a lot of rumors about the departure of Biel and Fortuny. Guys, uh, some of you has, have asked questions about Fortuny already. We will get to that. We will get to that topic. But surely, 
we already have three tens in the team. We have Carvalho, we have Costa, and we have BL. We're back in the same situation we were at this past season. Somebody's leaving. Somebody's yeah. moving on. But Scarpa, do you see him fitting in? He's a very talented player, but how does he fit in in this current mold? What do you think? Well, with the Fortuny's offer, I would say I'm expecting him to renew with Olympiacos and to be able to leave at the end of, of the transfer market in August because the more rational choice would be to to sell BL to make space for Scarpa and to have Fortunis, not probably as a key player, but maybe as a solution both on the wing and as a 10, because Fortunis will, will find a role. Like he will not complain if he's not if he's not play, playing. And but yes, Scarpa is like adding another 10, as you said, and we all remember what happened last season about 10s. Uh, I don't know. I don't really know what's the plan with Scarpa. Like it looks yeah. like more an opportunity than a real necessity. Even if talent talent is always necessary in a team, but I think it it's up to Martinez to find a place for him. Right. And maybe with the the deep dive, you will see in which position you can help more. <clears throat> Just to frustrate everybody when he's not used that way. Just kidding. Uh, Christy chiming in. I'm just glad I'm not going to see Oleg and perhaps Bukalaki play for Libyakos. Well, Chris, I can tell you Bukalaki is not going anywhere, but at least you can say, uh, at least you can say Oleg is uh, also going to be gone. Uh, Nolan or Fox, can we get a sneak peek on your thoughts on Heze and Ortega? Heze, my friend, the deep dive is on Patreon already. When he's announced, you'll see it. Uh, Ortega, I think. I am recording that tonight. And the reason to say I think is because I still have to pull the data. I have to, I'm not finished watching film either, but I, I'm trying to get that one done tonight too. So, uh, and you guys can see what that's about when that goes live, but I won't spend time on that because you got a lot of talked about still. Uh, also, Nolan or Fox had, or somebody asked a question. Um, yeah, ah, Nolan Linder Fox, here it is. Do we know the reason as to why Huang did what he did? Really quickly, we do not. Nobody knows. And that's what's been perplexing about this whole thing. But uh, the the Scarpa issue is he's coming from Nottingham Forest on loan, which is very beneficial for us for FFP because we don't have to worry about uh, transfer fee. The F, As long as his wages are covered, depending how they're covered by Forest, it's not going to hurt us. We have an important reporting deadline for FFP coming up in October. And this is... A, a talented signing to have, but to me, it signals at the very least, I think Joao Carvalho is going. He was really good in preseason, but he was garbage in that game against Gank. I don't think we see him improving much. I think it's going to go back to how he was before. Very inconsistent, although a talented player. I think he goes and then pro it's, and then I could see probably BL leaving too. It's not going to surprise me at this point. Uh, the last two transfer rumors of the day, we'll say, Anwar El Ghazi and Usama Idrisi, these are both players that play in Holland. And Idrisi is a, is plays for the Dutch national team. Anwar El Ghazi plays for the Moroccan. No, it's the opposite. Team. Oh, it's the, the opposite. opposite. Sorry. Sorry, I mixed those up. I knew that was going to happen. Um uh Idrisi plays as a as a winger for Sevilla and um he was born in the Netherlands, though. Is that correct? Yeah, both of them. Well, they were both born in the Netherlands. Oh, okay, forget it. What? Idris is the Moroccan national, and then the other one is the the played for the Dutch national team. I mixed that up. Sorry, but uh, other players we've been linked with. We heard the rumors, but then those have also gone quiet the last couple of days. Um, we're not going to spend too much time on these. But Martial, what do you make of both of these rumors? Do these? Does this seem? legitimate to you does it seem like players that we would bring in and would they add value to Olympiacos? i would say yes because we're we're struggling to get wingers since a lot of years now the the first one el ghazi has has had potential late uh, earlier in his career like is uh i don't know to say that but he has like tremendous potential in the dutch league and he never never really fulfilled that 
I remember him, he went to, I think he went to Lille years ago. He was okay, like he has a good technique, technique quality, uh, good dribble, but I, I don't know. I don't really imagine those players being wanted by Martinez, probably apart from Idrisi because he comes from a Spanish club, so probably Martinez knows him a little bit more. El Ghazi looks the kind of player like Modesto would have brought to the club. Yeah. But it's the same for Camano, uh, well, we were linking with yeah. weeks ago and ended up in Saudi Arabia. I'm not, re- I'm not even sure that Hel Ghazi is a real target. I might be wrong, but it does not look like the kind of deal that Cordon will do. I, I agree with you there. Did you see also just the briefly what I've looked at now seems to be more the mold that Cordon and Diego Martinez, like of player that have come in workhorses, the, that more tactically sound are going to do that type of listening, that type of running. El Ghazi is more of the, does look very creative, but is he going to do fit in the system as Diego Martinez wants him to fit? Because that's, what's important to him. The system must be above all. We'll yeah. see what happens, but I'm with you there. I think Idris is more of the Martinez name and El Ghazi. I don't, I don't believe that that's going to be a real, um, yeah. a real transfer. But the good thing is that both of them are under 30. So, yes, they, they remind me, and not because <clears throat> they have the, the same origin, but they remind right. me a little bit of uh, Afalai back in time. Yes, they yes. have talented uh, Dutch players. Uh, that had kind of lost the track, but they do have that potential. Like they could turn into really good player if they want to. Right. But they, yeah. they, it has to be loans. Like they do look like the kind of player uh, that would come with a loan plus option. Right. Um, then there is the yeah, big Burnham. topic. Oh yeah, the, you know what? Let's let's talk about him real quick before uh, um, before we move on. Christy asking, "What do you guys think about the Croatian winger?" Um, so Burnic, I did, I pulled data on him already. He looks good for me. There's a lot more I can tell you about that. There's also, unfortunately, a lot of stuff going on. We don't know. That really went quiet really quick. 1.5 million buyout, but apparently we're trying to wiggle that down now. Uh, that's another weird situation. If he's coming, uh, he, the, the, the kid's talented. I'll give it that much. Uh, and, of course, when if he does sign, if he gets announced by the club, you'll see the full scouting report. We've already pulled data on it. Everyone that's in the Patreon group has seen the data already. It's good. That's all I will sell you for now. But he he's somebody that uh, would be a pretty exciting, uh, exciting potential, very nice potential to have, somebody you could definitely make money on, especially in the future. Uh, Marcial, any early thoughts on Brunich? I don't know the player at all. Like, but I wonder, do you think is uh, it, it is to be compared with someone like Lazar when he came from Serbia? Someone yeah. like Chumic when he came? I don't know. Does he have better numbers? Oh, well, his numbers in Slove- in uh, Slovenia are way better than Chumic or yeah. Lazar's were okay. coming in. I'm, Even I'm Chumic not... is his. Well, Chumic at Radniki had really good numbers, but Burnic is better. Okay. In that respect, but there's yeah, still yeah. context. A lot of context with both. That's completely different. Um, now, Martial, the biggest topic, or probably one of the most toxic, I don't know, maybe not toxic, most hotly discussed today at the very least, was the rumor about Costas Fortunis going to Saudi Arabian club al Wehda or Wehda, al Wehda. Okay, with Donis. Where Donis is coaching. And the offer was 1 million euro to the, or just over 1 million euro to the club, Costa is going to make about two and a half million per season plus bonuses, I believe. Um, the total, what was the total value of the contract? It was it three years? It was ten million 
for three years. Ten million for three years. So two and a half million plus bonuses over three years. So ten million total value of the contract was a lot of money for him. We we on social medias we talked about since Costa has come back to Olympiacos, since he arrived at the club in a professional capacity in 2014, he has never once considered leaving the club. He had very real offers to go to other leagues. He had a very real offer to go to West Ham. And he said, no, he did not want to go. He said he would only go to a top league. If it was a top club from a top league, a top three or top five club that was coming in for him. West Ham at the time were not. So he said no to them. He said no to, what was it? Benfica a couple of years ago before the knee injury, the first knee injury. Was it Benfica only, or not Benfica? I, sorry. Besiktas. Besiktas that came in. I only re remember the West Ham refusal, but yeah, you, you're right. The, the, the key point is that he probably never had uh, a proposal like that in terms of money, like 10 yeah. million for three years. Yeah, that's probably that's never been a prospect for him. And he and, and he's just Costa has said this so many times on the show about Costa for Costas Fortunis and his mentality and, and, and what he wants for his uh, career was that he is a village boy from Calabaca. He doesn't want to leave. He's he has a kid now, another one on the way, or maybe he has two kids, maybe they're born already. So he has two kids now. I don't remember. And then he has um, uh, his wife's a school teacher. He, he doesn't want to leave. I mean, Olivia Cos was trying to get rid of him last season before they before they restructured his contract, and he refused. He refused. The, the, he has never wanted to leave Greece, and I don't see why he would now. Personally, now this is a lot of money we're talking about. Maybe that changes his mind. Yeah. There have been some people that have told us, "Look, we've." that are not inside the club, at least on this respect, but that are close to the situation that have said, look, he's, he's probably going, he might take the money. We've also had people tell us, no, that's not something that he would do. We'll see what he decides. It's a big decision for him. But if we look at the pattern of his decisions in this respect, I don't think he takes it. I think we see him. We just made him captain. I don't think the club is going to push to sell him. And for 1 million, Look, I know a lot of people were insulted by that offer, but, but let's we have to be practical about this, right? He's 30 years old, okay? So it's not getting any better from here. And he's in the last year of his contract. How much money do you think you're going to get from him? Uh, so for me, I think he stays here this year, and then whether the club renews him or not, we'll, we would see down the road, but I don't see him leaving. I think he stays this year, and then... You know, yeah, we'll I happens. think that the the, the 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 interesting point will be to see the the contract duration that the club will offer him if he right. turns down that Saudi Arabian offer. Like, yeah, will we start the season with Fortunis on a one year contract? Probably, but yeah, if he turns turns down that offer, I'm expecting him to ask for for another contract. Oh, of course, because you can't you don't turn. Of ten million during three years without a compensation from Olympiacos, right. so either it's better wage, or either it's a longer contract, or maybe both, like two years contract yeah. with no option. We've seen that in the past with Al Arabi, for example. Yep. So I, uh, it's a difficult situation, like. Yeah, that, that, that's the the trap that the Saudi Arabian clubs and even the Qatari clubs puts on on the other European clubs. I remember Guillerme when he had that offer, right? He did everything to leave, no matter the the contract offer he got from Marinakis himself. Uh, I'm not saying Fortunes will do that because, as you said, I'm not I'm not imagining Fortunes playing in Saudi Arabia, right? Like Fed Fat Cities, I remember. Reading interviews saying like he did not like the life there. No. That's so, why you have to offer so much money because once you get there and you realize the life there, it's like yeah. even it's if different. you do one season, like the, yeah. the worst case is like Fortunis goes to Saudi Arabia and it does not last three seasons. Right. Because no one does. Yeah. Un right. Unless you're the best player of the Saudi Arabian League, no one does. Yeah, yeah exactly. They all come Question back at the end of it. 
Question here from ASG7. Had West Ham made a, an offer for Costa? Yes. In 2019, they made two offers. Um, and this was all over British media at the time. And uh, before from COVID, Lucios. of course. When you see this was the sports director. Yes. And at the time, uh, they made an offer. I think it was like the first offer was like 10 million. And the second offer was like 16 million. And they weren't going to go above that because he had he was – that was a contract year for him, so he re later renewed his contract that summer, um, but uh, or the following summer, I should say, and he said no, he he didn't want to go, and Olympiacos had entertained two offers, but Costa didn't want to go. That was in 2019. Um, and then he, he fucked up his knee. Yes. <laughs> well, <laughs> we were because I remember like I was having conversations with people about that. Like, man, like, can you imagine if we took the money and then that happened with his knee? But you know. yeah, but it's a, I think it's an interesting point because when you had two knees injuries like that, mm -hmm. maybe like you think about those 10 millions, yeah, and you, you think of that, okay, I've had two knee injuries. What if I got a third one? On the last right. year on my on on my contract here. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. What we will what we will do in that situation? Is Greece that far from Saudi Arabia? In terms I, of quality? No, I've read that uh, Saudi Arabia like it's easier for players to bounce back to Europe when they have day off and stuff like that, compared oh. to China, for example. Compared to MLS, even that's fair. I didn't think about that. That's fair. Um, yeah, I've I mean, heard that I because imagine when, it was a shorter trip. Yeah, when Benzema left for Saudi Arabia, and they were comparing uh, Saudi Arabian league to the Chinese league, and they said like Chinese is a more closer country. Like it's, it's close inside. It's difficult to travel. It's mm -hmm. difficult for the family and etc. But maybe Saudi Arabia has to be closer by plane for someone yeah. that wants to go back to Greece. I don't know. That's I didn't think it's about that. It's up to him to decide anyway. It is. It's up to him. And even even the the article, um, the uh, Sinonoglu article that talked about it said it's up to the player. So we'll find out. We'll find out. Again, I don't think, it, I, despite the money, I don't think he does it. I think he stays and tries to get a new contract at Libyakos. Uh, that's how I see it. Now, I, I, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But I, I can't see him leaving this season, at least. I just don't see it happening. Um, now, uh, God, there were a couple of comments. Uh, from Mr. Scott Amanga, the team looks way more fit and quicker. Management has done a great job transforming the team where it should be, where it lacked the past years. Uh, they look quicker. They're not really match fit yet. As you saw, we had a lot of, uh, a lot of people cramping up which isn't always a good sign, but that's because this was our first competitive match. So hopefully that match fitness now starts to kind of set in with people. And we don't see that because that didn't look good towards the end. Everybody started to drop like bricks. Uh, you don't like to see that at all. Uh, ASG7, Fortunis has the talent for the Premier League, but not the physicality. Oh, yeah. That's always been the case. That's yeah. always been the case. Um, well... We've talked all about all the transfers, all the player news. We never did a post-match. Sorry, guys. The schedules didn't align. Uh, Costa and Lambro were both on holiday. It was hard to get them. And Costa, as you guys know, was over doing things at the stadium, getting stuff ready for the weekend. Uh, our other co-host, Costa Slianos, who's with us all the time, he unfortunately has had COVID. He's been quite sick for a while, the poor guy, so... It was very difficult. And then, you know, Martial works during the week. I'm here in the U.S. The times didn't match up between my work. We usually try to do these post-match and even pre-match. We didn't get to do it, but we will. So we didn't share the our opinions then. Briefly, we're going to share our opinions with you now. Uh, Martial, how did you see the Libyacos one nothing gank? What were things you liked? What were things you disliked? Uh, go ahead. Well, I did not dislike a lot of things, uh, Maybe the set pieces, as you said earlier, and but apart of that, I was really scared about gank young players. Like they have super fast players, super technical players, and we did concede situation, like mm -hmm. the last one with the red sauce save. 
But apart of that, the team did exactly what I wanted to see. It, it, it was not perfect at all, but right. scoring before the, the first minute indicates that the, the energy, the, the will of doing something is back in that team. Like uh, Even in the last summer, I did not find a game that, that, that were horrible. We, did, we, we just missed uh, a lot of situation, and we did miss situation too against Gank. But the, right. the difference, and I saw a comment about that, uh, about fitness level is insane. Like every player was fit against Gank. You had no difference in terms of readiness. Uh, and we played an European game. We won that, and it's and it's nice because it don't it doesn't has to be perfect every time. No, and maybe with a with Bakambu as a starter, we would have won two 0 I would say that's yes. my bet. Me, he, hey, I'm not saying El Arabi was bad, but in some situation, he he he, he, he just slowed the game. And yeah. maybe El Kabi will play more in the second leg. I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. I I I still worry about El Kabi. I said this. You for those of you that that watch the scouting report, I worry that we've set El Kabi up for disappointment. People, media calling him the next El Arabi or El Arabi 2.0. I I don't see that. I think he's going to do a job for us. I I see him scoring double digits in Greece at least. That that wouldn't surprise me. But when El Arabi was here and he was still firing on all cylinders, it was just a different thing that we've seen. That's why he's going to be one of the best strikers to have played for the club. He scored the most goals to, in the club history, or up. He's up there in that top in that top ten. So I don't, I I, I do worry about that. But El Kabi is quicker, and he can cover a lot of ground, which is really nice to see. Uh, another thing that I wanted to to share for positives for me, and I we did this in the the post match stats post that we had on on social media. In regular time, Olibiakos limited Gank to a total XG of 0.53. This is in regular time. One big scoring opportunity in 90 minutes. In the 90 minutes of regular time, we're not talking extra time. Where, where we seem to suffer the most chances was in extra time, especially in the second half. In the second half, we allowed three big scoring chances and that was just in that was just in the second half extra time of the second half but a grand total of gank's x uh, 0.9 xg just in extra time so we allowed a lot of great opportunities for gank in the in the dying minutes of the game which is which is dangerous to me because if gank had any kind of finishing touch i told you guys before the game that they couldn't finish they created plenty of opportunities but they can't finish if they had somebody that could score and finish opportunities, we probably would have lost that game three to one, two to one, three to one, two to one. I think probably would have been more realistic, but they couldn't finish yeah. during, during the regular game time, during the, the regular time before extra time was added. We had them stopped. We did. We did very well. They barely had any chances. We pressed very well. Martial, our average PPDA was nine. When the game started, it was at five. Five and six passes allowed per defensive action. We haven't seen that at Olympiacos consistently. We haven't seen that. We didn't see that last season, except for one or two games maybe under Michel. It's very good. This is very, very good to see. I'm curious to see how Genk adjusts because we did have, in my opinion, the we, we knew the problem we were going to see, right? That, that Trezor matchup with Rodine, we were worried about. And he was down there a lot. He wasn't as dangerous as I thought he'd be, but he did get a couple of opportunities over there. Uh, I, I'm curious to see how Diego Martinez is going to change this up a little bit because we really need to make sure that we lock this down away. Uh, we still need wingers. We need real wingers. I mean, the, the lack of width is still a problem, despite the fact that I think the team actually did okay in possession. But there's no way we can do this like Masuras on one side, Costa on the other side. We need a real winger, and we still haven't brought one in yet. So I don't know what 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 we're gonna do. Do we just grind out a zero zero draw? Is that what we go for, or do we just play with the same game plan we had for the first leg? 
I don't know because Genk, uh, I don't know if you've seen the number of Genk in Europe, like they won one game out of the last 20 or the last right. 19 game in Europe. So mm -hmm. they do have quality, but it, is, it did not turn into something concrete when it comes to results in Europe. So no, I agree I hope, with you. I hope it won't hand uh, on on uh, it's it's Thursday. Mm -hmm. And it, it, but the, the the most important thing that if we go through, we have guaranteed Europe. Right. Basically, my summer will be stressless if we win that game. I I, I get you. I hear no, what you're saying. Just think about it. Imagine this team. What this team could do in Conference League, for example. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Pauk went to quarterfinals. Yeah, well, listen. I ideally we should we should be able to get to a final of Conference League, but it's too that's... bad the away goal is not live alive anymore because winning one nil at home and going to the second leg away, like, it, it smells an early away goal that would have killed the tie but it's not possible anymore oh I'd be worried about that 100% especially with the Olympiacos team of last year and the year before I 100% yeah. would be worried about that who knows maybe what well, we don't know what we're going to see with Diego Martinez I liked at least the beginnings of what we saw there another thing that kind of worried me a little bit which I know it, it, a lot of this will come with the players getting to know each other and getting used to the system there were a lot of really bad giveaways Remember when I talked about the tactics, how I said so one of the things that I noticed with the system is you have one guy that makes a bad pass while the team is pressed so far forward. That's where so many dangerous counters came against uh, Grenada. Uh, that's, where, that's where I saw so many dangerous uh, attempts coming into any of the teams he coached. So we saw that a few times. And it wasn't just one person that did it. We saw, you know, bad pass from Madi here. There was a bad pass from uh, Rodine in one point. We saw a bad pass from a missing one. There were a The point is there were a couple. And this is at the point where we had nine guys forward. <laughs> so you had almost everybody forward with the ball or eight guys forward, you know, ahead of the ball. And it's a very, very difficult situation. One, one thing I'll say is I would rather see for this game a more mobile person playing striker like El Kabi, for example, even though he's maybe not in sync with the team, I would much rather see him playing and starting than El Adabi because for the press, you have a faster guy that's going to be able to get to the ball and somebody that can help us run. Or how many balls, Martial, did we see get played, not just by Costas Fortunis, but through and El Adabi or Masuras were too slow to get onto them. Oh, yeah, I that situation gorgeous balls that that don't count yeah. to xg because no one got to them but gorgeous balls that we couldn't get to yeah the situation in which masura has tried to play with the elbow oh. not the, the shoulder to get yeah. away from the defender and he got stuck in that play it's too bad because he could have shot earlier and yet like, it, it's the kind of situation you wanted to see tikino in like yes trashing the defender mm -hmm. and uh, throwing a, a missile into the net. Like I'm Masura, with you. Sometimes, sometimes Masura just has to be more, uh, uh, I don't know the word, like not uh, thinking that much. Like when you have a situation, you have to... Decisive. Think, he has to be more decisive. Yeah, more decisive, but at the same time, he has to be more uh, selfish, like yes. more uh, try his luck, like to shoot every time he has the, the possibility of. Yeah, I agree with you because... He has a, good, he has a good shooting technique. Like He's just not using it. Yeah, I mean, and I, I agree with you. And something we've talked about with Matsuras before is with his stats, like he's not a real winger, right? We, we've said this before. He's basically a forward playing out wide or a striker playing out wide. He gets so many opportunities touches in the penalty area and so many opportunities, scoring opportunities in the box. We need him to convert better on those. We had three big scoring chances in the game against Gank. Who do you think had two of those three? Masuras. Masuras. Masuras had two of the three big scoring chances against Gank. 
which is crazy. Gostas Fortunis' goal was not considered a big scoring chance because of the, the situation that he was in. It was actually, it measured at 0.11 XG. So he had a more difficult scoring chance. And Yorgos Masuras had two, some of our own, in some games he has the only big scoring chances. And there's no excuse for him to be missing all of them. He needs to do better finishing. And you're right. He has to just, you know what, take the shot. Take it. Be selfish. Be decisive. I'd rather you do that. And then we're sitting here talking about, okay, like he needs to be more accurate, get the ball in there, than just whether or not he's going to take the shot at all. Yeah. So I agree with you 100% on that, uh, Martial, because the one thing you get with Masuras is he's going to make those runs. He's going to get opportunities behind the defenders, but we need the oh, finish. It's, it's needed. Like This player is, is both needed and not needed at the same time. It's so strange. <laughs> There's a there is a reason why every coach that comes through, he's exactly. one of the first names on the team sheet. There's a reason why, because he puts the work and he gets in those areas. And they're just hoping that he's going to score one of those situations. So yeah. Chris T coming in. We need wingers. Yes. 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 Yeah. We trust me, buddy. We we know. Like this is winger, the winger position is going to be the new fullback for us. Like all we did for see for since the beginning of the show was complain. We need fullbacks. We need fullbacks. We need fullbacks. Now, now we're at the point where it's like, okay, now now we've got fullbacks. Well, we still need a left back. Hopefully, Ortega comes in, and you know, we we do need we need, we need a a fullback that's official. Then, but seriously, wingers like we we need real wingers, uh, people that will will stay wide, that can go to the byline, that can run at defenders. That's what we need. So you know what. I'm I'm expecting Madi to be decisive in that game because I'm reading comments uh, about uh, the fact that we have to play strong, we have to play uh, not to sit on that one nil, and and I do agree with that. But the players that emphasize, emphasize that the most is Madi because just the, the the I've never seen. I, I didn't see him play a lot last season with Roma. Right. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I saw him playing against Genk, I suddenly remember how good he could be. Like, it's my unpopular opinion. But yep. I would sacrifice I, every other midfielder, including Wong, to keep Madi one more season. Madi looked so good. And there's it no... Is, there's it no surprise the that we saw complete. that tweet from Fabrizio Romano because he that was old Madi. That was nice to see, man. That was good to see again. Of course, he has. He lost ball sometimes. Uh, he will try to shoot too many times, maybe. But he's so powerful. Like his long pass is good, very good. Mm -hmm. uh, he sees the game. He has good vision. He can do everything. He can do everything. Yeah. yeah. I mean, one thing I remember saying uh, when we the first the, like the year one of this podcast was talking about beginning of the season. One of the first conversations we had about Madi was my thing with Madi was I mean he, he had everything the vision. The only thing was like if this guy could figure out how to shore up his accuracy a little bit. I mean, this is a star. This is a star player, and God, you you can see elements of that. Like it's, it's not he dumb. is such it's a good player. Dumb. And uh, we had a quick question here from GS about uh, regarding the conversation we had about wingers. We need a real winger with width. Why did we get rid of Zinkernagel? Well, GS, the club didn't necessarily want to get rid of him. The player wanted to go. And, you know, what he went through last season, I can't really fault the guy. You know, it's that's frustrating as a player. You get brought in and you're loaned out right afterwards because you're promised these things and new coach comes in, he ships you off and there's a the club situation was not good. It was an absolute mess. But he wanted to go. He had a great season last last season in uh in the Belgian league and he look, his first game, his first game for Club Bruges and he scores. Game 1. You know, that, what do you I can't fault the guy. It is what it is. We got a decent sum for him um, in the end. We didn't really pay that much to get for him in the, to begin with. So it is what it is. It sucks. We've always rated him. He's always done well. And he's done well, you know, in Belgium. It's a shame we couldn't get the best out of him. So, you know, we'll see. My, my, my concern more is now 
us losing not just Huang to this to the the disaster debacle that's going on, but also losing Mahdi. We can't lose both. We have to keep one of. Otherwise, I what are we going to do? Yeah. Uh, if I can just add something, uh, you you all know that I I like Hagi Bukamara, and I suggest you to go to see the highlights of his first friendly with Atromitros. Because I, I still think he's a good player. When I see Carvalho playing as an eight, I'm, I'm not eighting Carvalho. He's a decent player, good guy. But we do have a, a really good potential. And I just wanted to say that. Because yeah. the first volley, he gave two assists, if I'm correct. Yes. And the first one was amazing. Yeah. So I'm not, I won't buy. I will never buy the fact that he has not the quality to play for Olympiacos. Yeah, it's another one. I mean, the <laughs> GS has a, a comment here that he literally took this right off the, the top of my tongue. Uh, not the crazy money one. <laughs> the uh, Alexandropoulos will have to grow up very quick this season. Yeah. And I, I think, look, it may, and who knows, like maybe, you know, he, let's say Heze comes in, you have Heze, Bukhalaki, Sibora, maybe Sorlis can play a role, but. I don't see where we're going to find a midfielder in the next couple of weeks that's going to have the type of uh, a potential that Huang and Madi have, and that's ready to go, and 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 do what they are going to what what they've already been able to offer us off the ground. Like okay, maybe Huang we just forget about because that's probably definitely not coming back. But like what Madi offers us, how are you going to replace that? How? We don't have we don't have the money to 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 spend on a ready made. We only have the money to get good looks, maybe some some gambles here and there. You know what I mean? Or find a, another veteran. But do you really want two veterans playing in the midfield together? No, you need two people that can run. I I don't know. It's it's this is a very difficult proposition for me. It's a big risk. I have to say, but those are words that only uh, works for me. But the Wong last season, Wong in, in big games, is not that hard to replace, in my right. opinion. The quality of Wong in general is really difficult to find on the market. Yeah. But the impact he has he had on the team, I remember the games, most of the games against Ike, like it was outplayed physically. He was kind of lost in that midfield. So it's yeah. a shame we did not see him with someone like Iborra, for example, but I'm more worried about Madi. Yeah. Because when Madi left, we thought like someone like Samaseku could be a new Madi. And it was decent, but it's not it's not Madi. Yeah. Well, and even like, you know, because I see the referring back to the comments, there's also more comments about Heze. Um, Heze is not a Madi either. He's not Huang, he's not Madi. He's a he's a different profile. When the scouting report comes out, you'll understand what I mean by that. But even with Hezek coming in, if we lose Huang and Mahdi, we still need somebody else that has that deep lying ability to make plays. Because otherwise, if we don't have that, who are you relying on to do it? There is one name that has that ability closer to Mahdi and closer to Jan and Vila. And people don't like him. People don't want to talk about him. But there's one name that it would be on the roster if both Inbom Huang and Mahdi Kamara go that can fill that role. Do you know who it is? That is on the roster? Yes. He has led the team when he has played for the when he has played regularly. He has led the team in smart passes per 90. He is left footed. He <laughs> he's left footed. Oh my God. Yeah, I know who he's talking Chat's about. Chat's gonna hate us. Chat's gonna hate us for saying the name. So you can say the name so they hate you. Is he Andreas Buchalakis? It's Andreas Buchalakis. There's one player, if both Mari Kamara and Inbam Huang leave, who has the deep-lying playmaking and accuracy from, from deep. As much as you guys don't like him, Heze can't do it. Yeah. Uh, Alexandropoulos, so far, doesn't look like that's something that he does. Ibora, not necessarily his cup of tea either. So we, we need somebody to fill that role. You need somebody to be able to do that. 
So anyway, it's uh, it is it's one of those things. And guys, we're going on an hour here, so we're gonna get ready and close up. Uh, Martial, do you have any other comments about the game? Any other comments about any of the transfers? Any other, a message maybe for the fans that uh, before nah, we go ahead and log no. off here? I would just say like if we go through against uh, Genk, I will be like as I said earlier, st stress less during the whole summer right. because Azer we go to the Europa League and it will be good. Azer we will we'll go to the Conference League. And maybe it will be even better because uh, I do I have, I do have hopes with this team in Europe, but what we need is to win games in Europe at all costs. Exactly. Exactly. Maybe, I don't know. I've I've did not take a look at the Conference League pots because I don't want to see Olympiacos in that competition right now. But if we can do a group stage with four games with four wins out of six games, imagine how good it will be. Yep. We're going to do that I'm, in Europa League anyway. Because the, the good thing is, the, the, the worst thing is that if we lose, lose to Genk, the tie in Conference League will be more difficult for me because we have to play against Adana Spor. And if we go to Europa League, we have to play Kluka Ricci, Yeah. Which is on paper... Uh, not as good as the Turkish team because Turkish team you always have quality anyway. So, but guys, Lambro's not here. <laughs> Ramon, Ramon for Huang replacement. Lambro's not here, guys. You can save the Ramon stuff with Lambro's in the in the show. Uh, comment from Alexis K. Uh, Ibora can't pair with Buhalakis. That 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 was my point. Um, if if you didn't get what I was referencing. That's my point. You can't, you, there's no way you can play both of those guys together, which is an, yet another reason why you need to find somebody, find somebody else. But anyway, guys, thank you everyone for listening, especially those of you that made it this far. Uh, this is Gate 7 International by the fans for the fans. We got a lot of stuff going on, a lot of things. Don't forget to check out Patreon. It is patreon.com slash Gate 7 International if you want to support us. Uh, Irakor, thank you again for your donation. But if you want to get something back for your donation, check out Patreon because you can get some extra episodes. There's a merchandise tier as well. Oh, guys, I don't, that reminds me. Merch is coming. So not just the merch for Patreon. That's going to be a different thing that you get uh, every year. It'll be something different, hopefully some choices. But we do have a merchandise lineup that will roll out uh, probably within the next couple of months. So keep an eye out on that. Uh, it's going to be really fun. We have a lot of fun ideas and designs that are going to be involved for that. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And we'll see you. I believe we have a pre-match scheduled for this week. So hopefully we'll see you then. Take it easy. Bye-bye.